All right, welcome back to the evening sessions. Uh, today we now we have Rob Walsh of Today in the Iowa's podcast. He's joining us for his 11th time presenting at Kansas Fest, and going to tell us about the latest tips and tricks of Apple's iOS and in related hardware and how things have been going and a lot of good stuff. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. I just realized that in 11 years of coming here, I've still driven less than any of you for one time. <laughs> I live not that far away, uh, so it's, it's nice. Thank you for having me back. Hey, I was trying to think, you know, what's happened in 11 years or in the 10 plus, it's really 10 years is my 11th time, but 10 years, what, what has been launched in this period of time? Game of Thrones was <laughs> April of 2011. Inception, July of 2010, I put that in, I still haven't figured it out. Um, <laughs> Glee, my wife made me put that in, May of 2009. The first Iron Man, so the Avenger movie series, didn't even start until 2008. Breaking Bad was January of 2008. Big Bang Theory, September 2007. Mad Men, July of two. Matter of fact, the first night it was here was like that was the week that Mad Men <laughs> launched. <laughs> Um, all of that came after the iPhone. <laughs> so that tells you just how much in popular culture, when you think about wow. that, I was looking that up, I was surprised on this one actually. I thought, no, for sure that was before, it definitely this one, but okay. Huh. Uh, <clears throat> when I was walking up here today, my back hurt with all the stuff I was carrying. When I walked up here 10 years ago, this is all I had to carry. And this is all I got to talk about. Was a four gig or an eight gig? Yay! <laughs> that was what my show was about, and it was and there was no installed apps. There was none of that stuff. And today there's like 17 different things I get to talk about. There's the iPhone 7 Plus and 7. We'll talk about that and the 6s Plus and the 6s and the iPhone SE and four. So there's five iPhones, four iPads, uh, one Apple TV now. They they pared it down to just one. We'll hopefully see another one. We've got five different Apple Watches, the smart keyboard, this, and then the only real new thing since last year, which are the Air Force. Uh, so we'll talk about those in a little bit. So this is what I get to talk about, so a lot more stuff to talk about. Um, we look about the last 12 months, what was n in the news, the biggest news for the last 12 months in iOS world. Um, I would say the iPhone 7 and 7 Plus, the AirPods, the Apple Watch 2 series, and the iPad Pro 10.5 inch. So those are the big on the hardware side. Got iOS 11 beta 3, tvOS 11 beta 3, watchOS 4 beta 3, and then the Note 7 last year was the hottest iPhone in 2016. Um, perfect. The Samsung Galaxy Note 7, it got more free publicity. I don't know how many people here travel? Right? I saw notes for this, the Note 7 every airport. They talked about it on every plane. I mean, man, you could not pay for that kind of publicity. Um, of course, that will happen there. And of course, these are banned. And this is actually, if you look in the reflection, that's actually me taking that. And that was at the Washington airport. And I was like, oh, I got to take that picture. And then I saw it at so many different airports. And when you have something like this, of course, um, that means memes are going to come out of it. So this was my contribution. <laughs> That's my contribution. I, I created that one. Nice. Um, um, but there's others that are even better. Um, how to sa safely charge the Note 7. Um, ironically, when the Note 7 came out, one of the commercials showed it in water, which wound up being the only safe place to charge it. Uh, there was this one. Um, I like this one. Yeah, even Cy got in on the action. Um, which, uh, the creepy girl one, uh, it's great. But of all of them, this is my favorite. Wait, wait, wait. You have to watch this. It's not what you think. It's, watch this. It's a Halloween costume. I bow to this person. I mean, that is the ultimate geek oh, Halloween yes. costume. So I had a lot of fun on my show talking about the Samsung Galaxy Note, Armageddon, Fire, Hellscape, Gate. Um, 
Apple couldn't have asked for a better situation. Um, but what Apple did introduce last year was, of course, um, wait, AirPods. Um, <laughs> and it, so here I found some cute, funny videos on this. Behold, there's finally a use for your useless jeans pocket, all thanks to our latest product, the AirPods. Entertainment value is one of our mantras, providing you with endless hours of fun trying to find lost earbuds. <laughs> Why use the current existing headphones that you already use when you can pay extra for what we call the future? We are all about being modern. Modern technology and modern design. Inspired by modern day relationships, they have no strings attached. What is more stylish than looking like you stuffed two cigarettes in? <laughs> On the drive up here, I actually um, dropped one of mine down the seat. I had to pull over, pull the car into a parking lot, get out and look under the seat to try to find it. Um, <laughs> that was like the first time that's happened. Um, but I did, I do have a pair. I actually found a pair that had it here. And I was going to say, oh, you know, I'll put my phone number. I have people call. But the beauty is this works great if you've got one of these. Don't get these without the Apple Watch. Because if you want to control volume, you can control the volume from here. Um, and it does make it nice that you can have your phone in your pocket, you can get a phone call, you can look down who it is, quickly reach down, pull this out. And it's a lot faster, by the way, to do this, pull this out, pull it out, and put it in, and it will connect that quick to your phone um, than it is to actually pull out the wired ones and try to detangle them. So if you've ever been frustrated by the tangled ear cords, this does pass it. Um, they, I like them. They look. I, I think they work great. My wife thinks I look like a dork with them in. Um, but they actually really, you know, the video shows them falling out. They don't fall out <laughs> unless you actually do what I actually did, which was I was trying to put, put my get my grab my glasses and I grabbed the ear and I knocked it out with my hand. But if you don't, if you just move around, if you walk with it. I, I've even gone to the urinal in the bathroom at the airport and, and had them in. I've gone through the metal detector forgetting they were in. Um, they, will take, they will make you go back. Um, but if you take them out and have them in your little pocket, you can go through the metal detector at the airport. Um, not the one where they scan, you have to be the TSA one. But it doesn't, doesn't set it off, um, so if it's in there, it hasn't set it off. I, I do like them, they last a long time. But the best part about it is it pairs really quick. And so, and the new update to the Apple TV, you can pair with the Apple TV as well. Cool. Now, the one big complaint about it is the price. People go, oh, it could cost so much. And you always hear this. This is the big meme about Apple. Apple, why are you so expensive? Um, you know, it's all memes about it. So ah. they don't have money for my clothes. <laughs> uh, and I thought about this, and I'm like, you know, Apple products, are, everyone complains that Apple products are so expensive and this and that, or Apple's losing market share. If they, they were priced cheaper, they get better market share. And I started looking at things and said, you know, how many units were sold all time of the, the iOS devices versus other things? So I figured you guys would appreciate that. The Apple II series, about six million was sold all time. All the Macs, starting with the Mac all the way up to the current Macs, 222 million. <laughs> Ford, huh. 366 million since 1903. Really? That's it, yeah. I, the Walkman, 400 million. How does that compare to iPhones and iPads? And that's before the announcement that comes out at the end of the month, which will be Apple's next announcement, will be um, August 1st, and this number will move to 1.6. 
So when they make the next announcement, this will move up to 1.6. So it was 1.522. So there should be enough iPhone and everything else to move it over. But that's more than all of those guys combined when you think about that. And as a matter of fact, if you were to take Apple II, the Atari 800, the Commodore, Vic 20s, all the Macs that are ever sold, this is more. And if I had more time, I probably should have put those in there, but I thought that was enough. So that's the iOS devices? This is iPhones and iPads, not, not the Apple, uh, not the um, iPod Touches. So if you add the iPod Touches, that'll move that number up even higher. So it's not all iOS devices, that's just the iPhones and iPads, because those are the only ones they've ever broke out. Okay. So if I, if I was going to move that, it, I could, it, it would be probably 1.7, probably 1.8 million, billion, excuse me, 1.8 billion if you were to add in all the iPod Touches that have been sold. You know, I always track this quarter by quarter, you know, when I first came here, it was, it was like 300,000 have been sold um, in a quarter. You know, now we look at the peaks, and there was 74.5 million one year, 74.8 million, 78.3 million last year. Um, people are saying that next quarter this is going to be a super cycle, and that'll leave and break that number. It'll be over 80 million in the quarter. It'll be interesting. And this is just sales of iPhones. So this is just iPhone sales by quarter as different devices were released. Um, if you do a four quarters, this kind of gives you more of a trend. You can see the the peak iPhone sales were back here back in 2015, that's when, the, that's when they went to the larger iPhone. So this right here is when the larger iPhones came out. There was this pent up demand, a bunch of people bought, and then it's kind of, the trailing four quarters has kind of fallen, gone up a little bit. Um, expect it to go up a little bit more here um, once we get uh, to the next big release. And then this here is all time, and this is the 1.1 billion of those iPads and iPhones were, were iPhones. So about that 1.5. Then the iPads, if you look at quarter, you can see here the trend line was this was the peak for the iPad. was back at 26 million iPads, and that was back in 2013. And then it's kind of come down each peak, you know, Christmas quarter. So that's why Apple keeps trying to do more with the iPads. Um, the reality is I just bought my dad. He had his 80th birthday. Uh, was July 6th. He turned 80. For his 80th birthday, me and the kids, uh, his, my siblings, we bought him an, an iPad, the new iPad 9.7. And it was to replace his original iPad, which he was still using, the first generation. <laughs> what Happily. Year was that? What? what year was the first iPad? Uh, 2010. <laughs> so he had it for seven yeah. years, that original iPad, and was using it and was happy <coughs> with it. Matter of fact, he was like, Safari's not quite as fast. <laughs> <laughs> what iOS was he running? Uh, Whatever the last one that was on that five, I think, five yeah. Song, yeah. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. So I had to turn off some things to get the Safari to run as fast. <laughs> uh, and then you can see the last four trends here. And this is the one that, you know, people always want to do the downside. Oh, iPads, iPads. The reality is the iPad is so well built that people just don't replace them. I mean, most people don't have, you know, four iPads, you know, my household because my show I do, my kids don't understand. That's not normal. <laughs> um, and then uh, here, here's what the total sales. So we're up to 360 million iPads have been sold. So put that in perspective, that's how many Ford cars have been sold. Right? Back to that other chart. So just the iPads alone, after this next report comes out, will be more iPads sold than Fords have ever sold cars. Uh, yeah, and they've done it in seven years, but it took them, uh, whatever, 214 years. Yeah. And then if you look at the trailing fourth quarter, I always love this, you know, um, at one point in time, Apple will say, oh, no, the iPad's doing better than the iPhone launched. Well, you haven't heard that since about here. Um, and this is a trailing four quarters when we go back and, and equal them out. So you can see right now, it's quite a bit different of uh, iPhone sales. So the iPhone is clearly their cash cow is where they make it. Now, I came here last year and I talked about Apple stock. I said it was down, but I thought it was way undervalued. And if anybody here had listened to me, you would have made 50%, 51% on your investment if you had bought last year when I came and presented. So whoever did, you know, free to go to Hereford House tonight. Take me out. Did you um, buy lots of stock? What? Did you buy lots of Apple stock? I had a lot of Apple stock already, yeah. so yeah. So I'm happy, yeah. Yeah, so it's one of, I, 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 I say on my show, I, I, I own it. I, I bought in early, so I'm, I can't complain. Um, but 
it's done quite well in the last year. Uh, a lot of factors had to do with one, it was just way undervalued. Um, there was a point in time back here where if you took out the cash, Google was worth more, and that just doesn't make any sense. Um, and I don't think we're going to see a 50% increase a year from now, but some people are still saying it, it could be a 20, 25%. We'll see where we are a year from now. When I watch the video next year, I'll see if I was go, I would go, oh man, I should have told people to sell, sell. Um, but at least last year, I kind of gave you a hey, bye. Um, so this is what was, is new with iOS. I always try to show you what was new in the previous year. iOS 10 was a lot about apps improvement. They were improving the message app, they were improving the music app, they're improving the maps app, they're improving the news app. It was all about trying to improve what they had. Um, iOS 11, what it really came down to, when you look at the new features, a lot of it's around the iPads, the iPad Pro. The iPad Pro now with iOS 11 can, for the most part, replace most laptop uses. Uh, it's because you have the Files app. Um, I have that down here. There is Files app. That allows you to move files in and out. So it really has become nice. The new control center is really nice. There is now screen recording built in native. Yes, which I'm so, as a podcaster, so happy. And um, the document scan sign, since I've run iOS 11, the first beta came out, I have not used my scanner in my house. You just hold it up to the document, you scan it, as soon as it comes in, I pull out the Apple Pencil, I sign it, and I send off the document. I don't even have to sign uh, physical documents anymore. It's really nice. Uh, QR Reader is now native. Uh, that, that makes some people happy, I guess. Um, do not disturb while driving is nice. Uh, quick type keyboard, drag and drop, which again is in the iPad, and the new dock in the iPad allows a lot of apps in there. So. The iPad was really gets improved, especially the iPad Pro is getting improved in iOS 11. Um, again, I'm trying to move up the sale of the iPads. Um, the markup for screenshots is really, it's a nice feature. Once you take a screenshot, it moves it down and you can mark up that screenshot. So it's, it is nice. They, they've done, a, when you get iOS 11, it, if you create a lot of content, you will like it. When does that come out? I'm going to guess September 20th. We'll see. My guess is it'll be September 20th is when it'll launch. Uh, we'll, we'll see how close that is. Uh, you know, there's rumors that um, the, the whole new iPhone 8 we'll talk about here is, is being delayed. Well, I'll mention that a little bit. Um, but I would say right now my guess is September 20th for iOS 11 and September 22nd for the next iOS, iPhone. Uh, this is what the dock looks like, and now you can have all these different features, and you can get right to your notes. Here's the screen recording app. You can put, you can remove a lot of these if you don't want them. Um, you have the text, you can change the text, you have a, a stopwatch, um, timer, and other things. Apple TV controls, so you get a remote for your Apple TV right in here. And this is on the iPhone as well, and the dock controls. If you force touch, you can change the volume and the screen brightness. Um, these pop up different features when you tap on them. It is nice if anyone wants to see it afterwards, I can show you it. I've got it running on one of the iPads. Um, the screen recording, again, is the one I like the best. You can have it with, with or without the audio. So you can just record the video and then add your audio later, or you can do it right while, you, while you're doing it on the device. Um, it does a pretty good job. I have a screen recording in here I'll show you. What kind, uh, kind of video does it create? Uh, MP4 or? It's, I believe it's MP4, and then uh, I just convert everything to MLB. I just open it up a QuickTime Pro and trim it down. Because I, I usually cut. Oh, no, no, I, tell you, I do airdrop to my laptop and then trim it for video. That's what I did for the, one of the videos I have in here to show. Um, but I, I think it was MP4. Uh, I showed this slide last year, and I went back and watched the video and see how I did last year. And I just want to say sorry, anyone who watched the keynote at, um, in, in September, I just want to say I'm sorry for spoiling it, because I pretty much <laughs> nailed it. Um, I got up here and I said, I go, they'll have this one, it'll be an iPhone 7, and this one, it'll be the 7 Plus, but they're not going to do this thing in the middle. And that's exactly what happened. Um, and, I, you know, and I said, I showed this one, I, I go, do you want me to switch to Android because that's how, you know, that's what you'll do if you get rid of the headphone jack. And I said, yeah, they're going to get rid of the headphone jack. And I go, go get Bluetooth headphones. Um, and, uh, but, you know, when you think about it, what was new with the iPhone 7? You have to excuse this video because it actually shows 7 Plus, but just make believe they're showing the 7. Most companies strive to make their products better. 
but at Apple, we pride ourselves on thinking different. That's why with the iPhone 7, we've done something that at first seems counterintuitive, and then is. We've made it worse. <laughs> we removed the headphone jack, and that's all. That's the new. That's the newness right there. It's just the lack of a thing that was there, and now it's not. It's gone. It's not there anymore. Ta-da! Once we conceived of this exciting new update, oh no, um, down date, it was so beautiful in the way that it allowed me to go home at 2 p.m. It's all about simplicity. Everything will run through one port. Now, you might be asking yourself, what if I want to charge my phone while listening to music shit? <laughs> and, you know, and that was the point where People were the biggest complaints when they heard it. I was like, I can't believe you know they don't have the headphone jack, and and the people were complaining and they were bitching and moaning, and you know sometimes it's better to be lucky than good, because if you're a Tim Cook and people are complaining, you're going, what what could happen? What could we do to get attention away from the fact that we took out the headphone jack and really downgraded it? And and that would be having your competitors' products catch on fire. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much good. And, and, and then people just were, holy, you know what? That whole headphone jack thing, that, that's not such a big deal when my, other, my neighbor's house is burning to the ground. So uh, sometimes better to be lucky than good. Right? Um, so I went back and I looked. How did I do last year? I, I missed on the 2 gigahertz clock speed. It was 2.23. Um, so I'll put that as a no. And I missed on it having a smart connector. I don't know what I was thinking. But everything else, was it the A10? That was a duh, and three gig of RAM, duh. Um, but I said it would be 7 and 7 plus, dual cameras on the 7, a larger camera on the 7, uh, sub, dual cameras on the 7 plus, larger on the 7, optical zoom on the 7 plus, um, same basic design as a 6S and 6S plus, removal of the headphone jack, more waterproof, so it's water resistant, and then stereo speakers, which I said, you know, which is great, because now when you want to listen to stereo music, you just go like this. <laughs> stereo. Question. So if removing the headphone jack and replacing the smart connector was a terrible idea, what did you predict last year that Apple would do this? <laughs> do you know how you get $250 billion? Part of it is you make them want to buy $169 Bluetooth headphones. You know, <coughs> I don't understand why they did it. I saw that it was coming. It was basically the, the rumor mill was pretty head, head on. Well, you mean, don't did get you see to. That it was shrinking so much that there was no room for the old kind of headphone connection. Yeah, I mean, it didn't really change. They could have done it. I am sure that someone at Apple could give you a very legitimate reason why, or I could be nefarious and say they just wanted more money and it, that's just the way they wanted to do it, and that made, it makes it look prettier when they have the headphone jack. But you know what? The headphone jack's still on all the MacBooks, it's still on all the iPads. The only thing they removed it from was the iPhones. Water resistance. Water resistance, but you know, it's a hole. It's a hole. You know what? The iPhone SE has a headphone jack and it's water resistant. Oh, okay. So it's still on the iPhone SE. <coughs> so I, I, you know, it is what it is. It's a pretty device. I mean, the iPhone Seven is pretty. Um, I wish it did have a headphone jack. I know a lot of people do complain about that. Uh, the blind community. Or stop. A lot of them stop at the six plus or go to the SE uh, for the headphone jack uh, for th different devices. So I've heard that from my listeners. But this is what you've got. The red one is pretty. Is really pretty. Um, this is the full seven and seven plus lineup. When, when you really look at what was new um, beyond the A10 and that, uh, it's up to, to 15 hours of Wi-Fi. Uh, the dual cameras. The front camera is now seven megapixels. Uh, it went to a quad LED flash, uh, 10x digital zoom, 6x digital zoom on video. I mean, the camera on the 7 Plus 
I'll, I'll just say this. The camera on this is phenomenal. I mean, it really is a great camera. So they did a really great job on it. So, I mean, outside of the headphone jack. Now, um, you know, look down the line. They go into 32, to, which is nice. They've upped it to 32 gig for the minimum there. And they went to jet black faster. But again, the no headphone jack. Last year, I was listening to my presentation, and I said, you know, here's a chart, and I, I give people, I give them scores. I always give scores, and I go, but I never give a negative score. I broke my rule. I said, okay, I'm going to give that one a minus three. Um, and if you look at what the scores were, and this is like how many new features. I said the 6S and the 6S Plus really were the best improvement in all the iPhone lines along the years. Um, this was equivalent to the 6, 6S. Go to seven with the six and the six plus. There are some nice new thing features in here. Um, the seven is is a solid phone. Um, I think I said I wasn't going to buy it if there wasn't a dual camera, and and they did have a dual camera, and I said okay, okay, well I'll, I'll go buy it. I said I would, uh, and my son is really hoping that the iPhone eight comes out this year with a lot of the features because he gets that and he's he's really really <laughs> praying that it happens um, so uh, here I mean here's the camera and, and one of the best features is this is what a regular picture looks like and this is what it looks like in in the portrait mode and if you go here this is even a little bit more drastic uh, shot to show you this is my other son um, by the way one was on the west coast and one was on the east coast so it was bi-coastal this last year so it, it does a nice shot. When you show people the picture, you show them their picture from a phone with this effect, people are like, oh, send me that. You know, it really is, really is a nice camera. Uh, question on that. Yeah. Uh, is that Oh, yeah, people send me pictures of every, people were sending me when they first got it, people were sending me pictures of Sriracha bottles with the depth effect. I've, I've got. <coughs> Let me show what I got here. Let's see if I can do this. Uh, I, I took one at, when I was at in New York City with it um, that I just. here and this one I, I didn't put it up but you can see and that was taken at the 9-11 uh, music at, uh, memorial but that's just that's a picture of a flower with that now, and I, you know what in hindsight I, I should have put that one in there because that, that picture I, I really liked so but the camera does a really good job. I mean, it, it's, it is a pretty phenomenal camera. It, it made it worthwhile, let me just say that. I mean, it, the fact is, what's the number one thing that you do with the camera, the phone, is, is the camera. Now, ironically, I think the new iPhone, when it comes out, the iPhone 2017, I don't think the camera's gonna be any different than what we have right now. I don't think there's gonna be an improvement on it. I think they're going to focus on other things this year. Uh, I have a question about the negative score you gave it for removing the headphone jack. Mm -hmm. Is that the only time Apple has removed a feature from the iPhone? Oh, yeah, no. <laughs> I didn't think so. No, they've removed stuff. They removed it. They removed, uh, they went from the, 20, the 30 pin connector down to the lightning connector. So you went from, oh, everybody had all these accessories, now you had to go to this. If you look at the MacBook, the new MacBook, my God, they removed everything. Yes, I, I agree. No, I, I mean, they, 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 I mean, they, no, I meant, in fact, I, they, they neutered it. I meant specifically the iPhone, because that was the only negative score you'd ever give. Mm -hmm. So uh, removal of any other feature from the iPhone, even that didn't warrant negative? Nothing else before warranted negative. Wow. That was the first one that you really say, wow, okay, 
really Apple did you have to you know they might say they did um, now I, I since I've had the AirPods the removal hasn't been such a big issue so once I got the AirPods I use them all the time so they're right there they sit there on the desk and then I pop them in and by the time I pick up the phone and answer it it's great if they're in my pocket someone will call me I'll have the phone in my pocket I'll look down and see who it is I can reach in grab the AirPods have them on my ear hit connect and they'll be working they do work that fast so their connection to your phone is really much better than it is with any other Bluetooth device. So give them credit on that. Would you revise your score today? No. Okay. Because you have, you have to have the Apple Watch if you really want to get the AirPods. Okay. I don't recommend the AirPods to anyone that doesn't have an Apple Watch. Because there's no way to control the volume. So if you oh, tap on the side. Tap on the side, this, that just stops it, but it doesn't change your volume up or down. Or you talk to Siri. You gotta talk to Siri, which is pain. You can say Siri. You can say Siri volume fifty percent. Siri volume seventy five percent. It'll move it up, but that's a pain. And if you're in the library, or if you just want to tweak the volume up and down, if you're, or, or more importantly, if you're listening to podcasts, there is no standard volume for podcasts. As a matter of fact, some podcasters don't even have the same volume in their own episode. Right? Uh, some people, they have no idea what the word compression means um, in, in levelating. So they just, they're, they're talking really low in one point, and then they go up like this, and they'll stay up like this, and you're like, ah. So some podcasts are literally painful. Um, so here is a, a mock-up of the iPhone 2017. probably going, well, that looks a lot like this. Oh, you're so wrong. They took this and they turned it 90 degrees. <laughs> so, yeah, hey, it, that's what's going to be different. The cameras turn 90 degrees. So that's what's going to be the big difference between the iPhone. And now, the, the screen is, is stretched, and there's some rumors that the screen is going to go up like this. And, and this, by the way, is the iPhone 7, and this is the 7 Plus. So this is to show you a comparison between them. And this is what they're thinking, it's gonna go down here, no more home button, that'll be gone, and it's gonna go up here. Now, this is the latest rumor as of like this week that someone found these screens that were supposed to be going to Apple construction, and if you actually look at the screen a little bit closer, uh, it actually goes flat at the top and not up like this, which makes sense, because I just didn't see that happening anyway. So it'll go across the top here, down at the bottom, there'll be a little bezel at the bottom, um, but edge to edge for the most part. And if you actually go, if we go back here, this, you know, here's the thing. If what happens, which I think is going to happen with this iPhone 8, um, which a lot of people are going to say is iPhone weight, iPhone late, and then iPhone great, so you're going to get all those memes. Um, uh, if, if this happens, this is supposed to be 5.8 inches is, is the common belief across versus 5.5. So it'll actually be a smaller device, closer to this size, but a bigger screen. Now, is there a precedent for that? Yep. The iPad Pro. See, it's basically just a tad bit bigger than the 9.7 inch, but the screen is much bigger. And it goes pretty close to the edges. So Apple's shown that they're doing that already. They're going to the edges, they're doing a bigger screen, but not a much bigger product. So I do think that's going to happen. Um, again, is this really the really Apple's products being shipped? Could be. Uh, it's about time for these roamers to be showing up for the product. Uh, I don't buy this rumor. The fingerprint sensor on the back, I'm not buying that one. 
I don't think Apple's going to put the fingerprint sensor on the back. The one that, um, the one rumor I've heard is the power button will be bigger, and that will be your fingerprint sensor. That they'll put the fingerprint sensor right on the power button on the side. It'll be a bigger one. That makes more sense. Um, others say it'll be in the screen. Uh, this is the other rumor I like. This I'm saying Apple for this round is going to go with a kind of a, a shiny metallic, like that one iPod Touch that they had. It was like that, and they'll have a red, a silver, and a kind of a gold, <coughs> shiny metallic version. But it, I don't know, because the other thing is that it's going to be inductive charging. So I think that's I, I don't buy that one. But if you look here, this is the latest rumor I'm hearing is that that this right here, the fingerprint, the power button would actually wind up being the fingerprint sensor. Um, that might make more sense than having the fingerprint sensor in the screen because w everything I've read about the fingerprint sensor in the screen at Qualcomm, what they can do, it's not as secure as the current one. And I don't see Apple downgrading security. So it has to be something as secure. I don't see them getting rid of it. Yep. Now I'm lefty. Um, but, yeah. So, uh, I, I asked this question with, with respect, but so I've, you know, there are a large number of people, like uh, news sites and uh, commentators who cover Apple, like every aspect of Apple, and a perennial story is about predictions and rumors about what Apple is going to announce. But I don't understand why so much energy goes into these predictions because you know your prediction might be right, they might be wrong, but it doesn't matter. You have to wait till Apple announces what you can actually buy for it to you know have some meaning for you. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean that's a Mac rumors, Apple rumor sites. I mean that's 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 powered the internet for years. Well, right. Yeah. So why? 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 Because Apple cre Apple created this. Apple's created the, the security. Uh, you know, has created this with by not telling people ahead of time. It's you know, it's just. It, I mean, let's look at this. There's the, the the site The Verge was created out of creating fake news about Apple products. They just made shit up. Completely made shit up. All right. I mean, they when it was called This Is My Next, they didn't have one credible rumor. It was just guys in the back spinning a wheel, picking random stuff out of the air, and saying, oh, I have a source that said this. No, they didn't. They, didn't have, they never had a source. It was just totally made up shit. And then they Verge wound up selling to whoever the company that bought them for a bunch of money. You know what? It works. Ask just you know, uh, Joshua Topolsky. It worked pretty really well for him to make shit up. <laughs> well, look at when they... What? Well, he didn't have to admit to it. It was just you go look at his his predictions. They were wrong. I mean, this the Verge. This is my next. It became the Verge, um, uh, BGR, and Digitimes. Complete fake news. They are they are to they are they are like Breitbart of technology. <laughs> all right, they are the Alex Jones of technology. But, okay, but then why why as a consumer are, are they so you know does this drive so many clicks as a consumer? Because I can't. You know, I can't go into an Apple store when they have a new iPhone for sale and say, well, this rumor site said, you know, this feature is going to be in your phone, so uh, you, know, you can't buy the phone with the rumor feature that you're not to be true. Um, you know, you have to, some, first off, some features by Apple get leaked. Apple does leak some things. They, they, they'll leak some stuff out there to, to see how, it, how the reaction is. Um, but it's just people are religious. They're passionate about their Apple products. They want to know. Just want to know. And it's fun. Yeah. Trying to find the leakers. You know, it, it, by the way, it's funny. It's like Tim Cook said, oh, yeah, well, this year we're going to really cut down on the leaks. He said that last year. Last year I came up here and I basically told you what was going to be the F7 Plus. <laughs> you know, just from consolidating the news. It wasn't that IK had a secret source. I didn't have a secret source. I just looked at the people that were reporting stuff. I said, does it make sense? Does it not make sense? It's and the entertainment tonight for right. leaks. <laughs> yeah. It, 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 you know, you have to look at what Apple does. First off, if, if it's a feature that's really way out there, it's going to be the first time it's ever been released, it's probably not going to be in an Apple product. They don't tend to do that. You know why? It's really hard to make first-run technology in 80 million devices. Right? They can't be the first mover on a lot of the technology. So the screen, the rumor with the screen fingerprint, I find that hard to believe because I don't think the technology is there in mass production yet to support 80 million devices in a quarter. It's not a very large, no, not a big, like, Samsung, Galaxy, 
Yeah. Okay. Hey, by the way, Samsung's whole Fire Escape Armageddon gate happened because of Apple rumors. Because they said, oh, wow, this next update's not going to be that big a deal. We need to rush this out before. They rushed the Samsung Galaxy Note 7 out the door early because, internal memo showed this, because they saw the rumor mills for Apple showing it not be, uh, the next iPhone not being a big update. And they tried to take a 10-pound sausage and shove it in a 5-pound casing for, in the battery, and they put too much battery in a small package. So they, they had the law of physics against them and other things. Um, and, and you know what? That is also goes back to the fact that Apple has the full control of the system. They don't need as big a battery or as dense a battery in their devices. So Apple has that going for them because they have much better battery management and power usage. So Galaxy Note 7, which is the culmination of Samsung trying to jump to rumors, bad design, and not enough Q&A. Yes? If I get a new phone, how am I going to stream audio or something on that to my car if I don't have a Bluetooth car? Well, you go out and you buy a third-party market, aftermarket a stereo receiver for your car that supports CarPlay. That, you know, or you buy a new car. Apple's coming out with a new car. Yeah, we went over that last year. Last year I showed you some of those. I don't have them this year. So, you know, I'll go out and say, okay, what's going to happen this year? This is kind of when I look through the rumor mill. What do I think is going to happen for the iPhone 8? Um, you know, this is like, okay, this is my easy one. I, so I make sure I have one yes. It'll be an A11 processor and it'll be 64 bit. Okay. Uh, maybe this time it'll be 2.5 gigahertz. Uh, I think they'll stay with 3 gig of RAM. Uh, I do finally think their, their talk time is going to go up. Uh, the cameras are, are going to the camera's going to get turned 90 degrees. Um, the latest rumor is a rear 3D laser focus autofocus on the back of the on the device so that they can use it for AR. Uh, you're not going to hear me talk a lot about AR. Just a little bit here. Uh, uh, on the next slide, I'll mention it. Um, I think they're going to up the, go the storage to 64 gig on the low end and go up to 512. Uh, wireless charging, I still think it's a possibility for this next one. Um, ProMotion technology, that is the 120 hertz screen. I've got the new iPad Pro that has that if you want to see it. And you can compare it to the old one. And you can see a difference if you look at it. And I'll show you where I actually have an example of why it really is a nice feature. Um, an OLED screen. There's too much rumors for there not to be an OLED screen this year. Um, now, one of the rumors is that all the iPhones that are going to be released, they're going to have three this year, and they're going to be OLED. I don't see that. I only see two iPhones. I don't think they're going to do an iPhone. Uh, you know, if we go back to that picture with the three iPhones, what is the value in the 7 Plus when the screen is bigger on the iPhone 8 and all the other specs are the same? Why would no one has told me at this point why this new iPhone, which has a larger screen than this guy, but is in a smaller package, what's the advantage of this? What, what, how does this? How does this fit in the product roadmap? It doesn't. Matter of fact, from that perspective, if it's so close in size to the iPhone 7, how does the iPhone 7 fit into the roadmap? So what will wind up happening is you'll have the 7 and the 7 Plus still for sale, but I don't think you're going to see a 7S and a 7S Plus. I think you'll only see an iPhone 8, one new phone this year. Because when you look at how it falls into that, other than upping the processor on the other guys, and this, I just don't see how it, it works out. It doesn't make sense, to me at least. Yeah? So, so they were saying there were going to be three new phones this year and they'd all be OLED. I think there's going to be one new phone this year and it will be OLED. And then what they might do is the 7 and the 7 Plus, they may still call them the 7 and 7 Plus, but up the processor, or just leave them as the 7 and 7 Plus and only have the iPhone 8 as the new one. What is the definition? Oh, OLED, um, organic light emitting diode. It's a lower, it's a it's a lower power in theory and better um, until you walk out into bright light outside. Yeah. <laughs> um, because nobody uses these outside. Um, there's advantages to OLED. And the OLED technology has come a long way in the last. Um, the um, 
the latest the latest Apple Watch is OLED, right? Um, so, um, so it, it so Apple has some experience there. There's rumors that Apple's bought a whole plant, all of LG's OLED um, ca uh, production capability for the rest of the year. So there, there's a, a lot of smoke pointing towards an OLED display. I, I believe it'll be the iPhone 8. I think they're going to do it just for the fact of the wow factor. It'll be the edge to edge display. The home button in the screen versus the home button on the power button. I am leaning right now at this point in time to the home button on the power button and not the home button on the screen. Um, I, I just I don't see Apple putting in something that's less secure than what they currently have. So if it's not as secure, how do you get the current sensor? I mean, the sensor doesn't have to be round. It's just round because that's what they want it to be. It only has to scan part of your fingerprint to actually get it right. Right? Yeah. So they can do it on there in that small size. Yes? If they introduce the 8 and they keep the 7 on the market, does that mean the 7 becomes cheap? It'll drop 100 bucks, and the 7 Plus will drop 100 bucks, and the 8 will, will fall right above. I, I don't believe this rumor of a $1,400 phone. That's, that's one of the rumors. I don't buy that rumor. I, I don't think you're going to see anything different. Now, people are like, oh, it'll be a $1,000 phone. Well, you know what? If you bought the 7 Plus fully stocked, it was already a $1,000 phone. Yeah. So it was already, they already have a $1,000 phone out there, and people bought it. So they'll buy it again. Um, so these are what I think we'll see next year if I come close. Um, again, a lot of things that people talk about is you know it's virtual reality, VR versus AR. And it, it is funny, my, my wife and some of they ask, what's the difference between VR and AR? And I have a really simple slide to show you. That's VR, and that's AR. <laughs> and my son's like, what's Roger? And I was like, oh. I was like, I haven't shown you that movie yet. <laughs> um, I know. But VR, it's change of reality, and AR, it's just adding something to it. I am not, I don't see in the short term it being as big a deal as a lot of people are making it out. I think it's, we're still a little bit away, although, the AR capabilities were there on the Android side, but only two Android phones really actually support it. Whereas if Apple does the AR kit and when it's released and iOS 11 comes out, you're going to be 500 million devices that are AR capable. So that makes it sense for developers. A lot of it's gimmicky. I mean, we have an AR. Um, the reality is a lot of people have already been doing AR, called Pokemon Go mm -hmm. is AR. Um, but some of the other stuff they talked about and they showed in the WWDC keynote where they had this city and it was being tacked and there was things flying in and you had to look at it from your... I was like, really? Okay. I don't know. I, di I didn't see as much. I, I, I think Apple's going to add features for both of those and, and we'll see how it goes. Uh, future phones, you know, this was what people... You know, I showed this last year. This is the curves display was a big rumor and going into this year, um, I didn't buy any of that. Still don't, um, but where is it at? This is the one that I'm waiting for. And someday we'll look back on that and go, and hey, you remember when we thought that was really cool? Oh, that was so fun. Um, 
So that person did a really good job. Uh, this is where we are on iPads. Um, this is a little bit better breakdown of what you can see now for the screens. It's a 12.9, a 10.5, a 9.7, a 7.9. Um, the bench scores on these, this is a single CPU, longer is better. This is the 2017 MacBook Pro, 13 inch. Um, this is where the iPad Pro for single core comes in for the 12.9 and so it's not that far off from the MacBook Pro in 2016 and it's still pretty close there. When we get to multi-core, it's actually better than the 2016 MacBook Pro speed and pretty darn close to the, to the MacBook Pro 2017. And when you actually get into graphics, it actually gets better than the MacBook Pro. So it is actually a really powerful device um, and it beats a lot of laptops, the MacBook Pro in, in performance. Um, this one kind of shows you how the screens, how they line up to kind of see how they compare in size between the 10.5 and the 12.9. And um, you can kind of see it better a little bit here. But the big thing here on, the, on, the new, on these guys is the new 120 hertz and the ProMotion. And you might say, where does ProMotion really, really, really come into play? Paper.io. When you can have that extra little bit of little capability, you can go from 22% best time to 50%. So, um, so if you haven't played paper.io, oh, you, I just ruined a few of your lives. Some, some people are going to be really mad at me. It is a great game. You actually play against other people. And you try it. It's basically like, like think about, think about a, 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 a battle royale of snake. And you build up your area. And if you crawl across somebody while they have an open thing, it kills them. And having that ability to swipe just a little bit quicker and faster and have a little bit better speed for the reaction time, it, it, it actually playing uh, paper.io on the iPad Pro with promotion, I do much better than I do on the, I the older iPad. So yeah, if, if nobody knows paper.io, and I can tell by the reactions nobody did, uh, <laughs> you will hate me for introducing you to that game. We'll still be here next year playing it. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's one of those addictive ones. Um, the Apple Watch Series, one of the things people keep thinking is that there's now the Series 1 and Series 2, and they think, oh, the Series 1 is the same as the original Apple Watch. It's not. It actually has a better processor. The original Apple Watch was a single core. The Apple Watch Series 1 is a dual core. Is, a, uh, is, a, uh, is it a dual, is a dual core? It's, how did it work out? It's two cores better, and this one is four core. Um, it's a, it's a faster processor, so the processor in the Series 1 is twice as fast as this, the original Apple Watch, and the Series 2 is four times faster, so that's what it wind up being. Um, the S2, the new Series 2, the big difference is the built-in GPS and uh, Glasnos, um, so you get better uh, awareness of where you are, and it is water resistant to 50 meters. So it's, if you actually want to swim, you want to do laps in the pool, you go Series 2. And the pricing now, uh, these guys are like $1,300 on the top end, the watch edition, which is ceramic, and the Hermes. Uh, and then the pricing goes all the way down to the Series 1, which you can find at pretty decent price. Yes? What's the number of charges? Because right? that was an issue with the original one. They wouldn't charge like 200 times. I, I've charged this every day, and I've had it since it was released. And it works fine. It makes yeah, it. You don't know. You don't know. Yeah. I mean, it's still, still working fine for me. Um, Apple TV, the biggest announcement for Apple TV is that Prime Video is there. So anybody who's waiting to see, uh, you know, uh, Mr. Robot Season 2 just came out last week, you'll be able to see it on Apple TV. More importantly, this Tick is coming um, to any Tick fans. And then, you know, if you look at what's going to happen this coming year, well, we know HomePod's coming. I didn't talk about HomePod because it's not released yet, um, although they announced it. Um, and Apple TV 5th Gen, they're due for a new Apple TV. Um, and then there's going to be something about AR and something about VR, I think, in the next year Apple's going to release. I think those will be the, the things. And, you know, I, I, I don't know what, when, when am I, I'm not done, aren't I? Yeah, okay. So, sorry, I didn't know what time that was over. Um, 
But I had to, I brought some other gear. If you guys want to come over and see any of the stuff, I can go over there and show you the, the iPad Pro and that. Um, thank you for your time.